Well, thank you very much for that uh, nice introduction. I'm honored to be here at your meeting. Thank you so much for having me. <clears throat> I've been preparing for the evening by thinking about how best to capture life at Politico and the speed and the intensity of the news cycle that we've been in right now. I settled on the night of Sunday, May 1st of 2011. So on that night, I had just started at Politico probably about three weeks earlier. I had left as the White House and Legal Affairs Editor at USA Today and came on board at Politico as Deputy White House Editor. So my role there was to handle breaking news that had to do with President Obama and his administration. So that night, for once in my life, I decided I would go to bed early. I never do that. I'm always <laughs> up late nights when I feel energized. I do some of my best work at 11.30 at night for Politico. But I decided I, I was going to go to bed. My kids were actually asleep. It was a quiet evening. And I thought, before I would go to bed, I would just check my iPhone email one more time. Because of course, if you know anything about Politico, you know everyone walks around with their iPhone and stares at their email all the time because part of our reason for being at the website is to jump on the news as quickly as possible and cover it as intensely as possible. So I looked down at my email and it was a little after 10 p.m. on a Sunday night and I see an email from the White House and it says only the lid is off. Now, for anyone who knows about White House coverage, the White House puts out what are called pool reports these are done by the journalists who cover the White House, and they're written for other journalists. They track the president's movements, announcements that are coming out. If the president goes on a Sunday, for example, to play golf, the pool reporter will go with the president and send a note out saying what time he played golf, who he was with, other information like that. And usually on the weekends, that's about as exciting as it gets. So I was not expecting to see a pool report from the White House. The lid is a term that means there's no more news coming out of the White House that day. The lid means that the president is done with his activities for the day. There'll be no more announcements, no more official news. That doesn't mean that one of your competitors won't scoop you on something in a few hours, but it means there's no official news coming out of the White House. So I looked down and it said the lid is off. That could mean only one thing on a Sunday night. Major news was about to break and I would not be going to bed anytime soon. <laughs> So I began to uh, frantically call all of my reporters and my editors to let them know that something was up and we were scrambling to try to confirm the news. There's a mad scramble, turn on the television networks to see nobody had this, but rumors were starting and Twitter was, was heating up and speculation was running rampant as it so often does in Washington. So we, along with other news outlets, finally got word from an unnamed official Osama bin Laden had been killed in a raid. Of course, major dramatic news. And to handle it so soon after coming uh, to Politico was both very exciting and a little daunting. So we all snapped into action. We began building out a story based on what we knew. And that's part of what we do at Politico. We will put even a few paragraphs out to let readers know something is beginning to happen, and then we'll keep moving the story out. We call it reflowing again and again and again as developments continue to occur, and we have more information, and we're we'll able to bring readers more. So that's how the night went. President Obama came out, and he spoke, and he did confirm the news. We, of course, reflowed the story with that as the lead and more details began to come out and I worked uh, until about 2.33 in the morning along with our team because everybody suddenly appeared on email, on phone, the entire staff mobilized in a way that was very exciting and then we woke up early the next morning and began it all over again. So a wonderful introduction uh, to Politico and to get to do it on a story that was a, a triumph for the United States was also wonderful because so often in my business the big news that breaks is, is sad, tragic, uh, complicated, there's partisan strife. It's very rare you get a story that all sides agree is a positive development for the country so that also made it very nice. And that adventure started a wild ride at Politico, a wild news ride that really has not let up since. Uh, I oversaw the White House breaking news team as the nation nearly defaulted on its debt. That was a real cliffhanger, you'll remember, in 2011. And then there was an 11th hour deal, of course, reached by two Washington veterans and longtime power players, went from each side of the aisle 
Vice President Joe Biden and Mitch McConnell in the Senate. In January 2012, I was promoted to White House editor, so then I was overseeing the entire White House team coverage of President Obama and his administration. And that became an all-consuming year, of course, a presidential election. There is nothing Politico looks for more than a presidential election. So, of course, very exciting, intense time throughout the year for the staff. And during that summer, I worked closely with my colleagues on our health team. Politico has its main website, which is free, and then we also have policy sections of Politico that write both for the main website and our subscribers very intensely on particular policy areas, such as technology, defense, uh, health is another one. So my colleagues on the health team who are experts were prepared on Obamacare. In addition to overseeing the White House, one of my reporters is our Supreme Court reporter, so he was very closely involved in coverage, obviously, as well. So then we got a landmark Obamacare ruling. Leading up to that, of course, all kinds of speculation. And to have Chief Justice John Roberts, a conservative, be the decisive vote to largely uphold the president's signature health care program was another dramatic story to write out and look at every angle for, for Politico. And of course, the daily turn of the election cycle only intensified after that. We had the Paul Ryan pick, we had the convention, and then we had the debate. But we all thought the debates would be sort of sleepy, you have to cover them, they're important, they usually don't change that many minds. But then a much more dramatic debate than we were expecting. President Obama somewhat forgot to show up to the first one. Uh, I think fair to say was not quite on his A-game for that performance and, and suddenly made the election uh, much more interesting to see how he would recover from that. So that brought more focus, of course, to the second and third debate than there normally would have been. And there are all kinds of pieces to the news cycle. The 47% the comment that Mitt Romney made that got so much attention at the end. Uh, his problems with women voters. You all remember his comment about the binders full of women. All of these uh, trends kept us very busy, but it was, it was predicted that it would be a close election. Now, interestingly, President Obama's campaign team always disputed this. They kept telling us very forcefully we had it wrong, the polls had it wrong, it wasn't going to be that close an election, and we said, you guys are spinning us, all the polls are showing us it will be a close election. So uh, we moved forward with the drama of the campaign. We, in addition to the stories we did for Politico, one of my colleagues, Glenn Rush, wrote several e-books capturing inside the campaign and got some wonderful details uh, for one of the books he did that we've all heard about the no drama Obama team. There actually was a fair amount of drama behind the scenes, as there always is with all campaigns, but uh, fun reading for those of us who love politics and thrive on it. Uh, we did more fact checking at Politico after the debates to look at claims on both sides, what they said versus what actually might be a more complete and true uh, rendering of events and looked a lot at accountability gaps between the president's promises and actions and as much as possible did that for Mitt Romney as well. So we all worked long into the night when Obama was re-elected. Uh, capturing his larger than expected victory turned out the Obama campaign folks had that right and most of the polls had it wrong. Uh, a lot of egg on, on Gallup's face after this election. And during the second inaugural address, the president laid out an ambitious agenda including immigration reform and a much more robust liberal vision than we've heard from him in the past. So already interesting storylines in January emerging for journalists to look at throughout the year. Um, I also had a change in January. I took on a new role at Politico as a deputy managing editor. So now coordinating coverage with our politics and policy teams across the newsroom, particularly working with my boss on the big story of the day and making sure we're on the news that we need to be on and finding the most interesting angles to tell our readers about. So I thought the news would quiet down a little bit after the election. I'm, I'm still waiting for that to happen any day now, I'm sure. Uh, just in the past few weeks, of course, we've had a ton of news, first on the Washington controversy, such as Benghazi, an issue that the Republicans pushed a lot, the Democrats and Obama have pushed back hard on that one. 
uh, and other scandals in Washington, the IRS mess, of course, the disclosure that the IRS employees had improperly targeted the Tea Party for review, uh, the Justice Department's leak probe, you'll remember that was a big issue during the presidential election, the national security leaks that were coming out, which is what led to the leak probes and then the pushback when reporters got pulled into that and they so often do. Well, those leak probes look minor in comparison to what we're now faced with, the latest news of widespread government surveillance that came out. We jumped on that, of course, last week. And we all thought that it would lead to a, quite a large leak probe because of the importance and uh, highly classified nature of the Verizon records, the prison program. These are a very big deal in government. So on Sunday, this past Sunday, you'll notice a pattern here that everything always happens on a Sunday. Um, this time my husband and I had taken our two kids to, to see the encore stage production of Sleeping Beauty. And I look down again at my phone at intermission to catch up on email and I see tons of emails pouring in. And it turns out that Edward Snowden had come forward, done an interview with The Guardian and also with The Washington Post to say that he was the leaker. So again, we scrambled. I, I spent the second half of the play in the very back of the theater going like this on my phone and trying to cover the phone so nobody around me could see that my terrible um, audience manners during the play as we tried to get everybody to, to spring into action and start covering all angles of our latest story. Uh, we, we pursued two that night. Sometimes when news is breaking on a big story like that, you do the best you can to bring added values to your readers. We obviously didn't have any access to Edward Snowden, so we had to think about what we could bring to that story that would be helpful to our readers. We did two stories that night in addition to our main breaking news story. One looked at the complex legal path ahead and options for the government, and the other looked at the fast-growing world of defense contractors, a world that the uh, defense and intelligence industries rely on very heavily, have become so, so critical, particularly since 9-11. And uh, that group of people has incredible access to classified information, another storyline that will emerge that we'll be following this year. We started Monday with many more angles in the works. We looked at the reaction in the tech world to Snowden. Of course, you've all seen the hero versus villain debate and very strong opinions on both sides of that question about Snowden and what he did. We looked at how President Obama is handling the latest news about Snowden, which is very quietly, really not addressing this. Uh, Jay Carney, his spokesman, was asked about this many times today and, and would not go there. The administration obviously has to be very careful with what they say about him because we're looking at uh, very likely criminal charges and a prosecution. So it's obviously a sensitive topic that none of them want to pop off about without some careful thought beforehand. And then today we've got the Senate beginning their floor debate on legislation that has the best chance of finding a real compromise in our gridlock city, the, the immigration debate. Uh, still a very difficult path for immigration reform to become law. It got out of committee in the Senate, that was hard enough. And in some ways the real test for the legislation is just beginning on the Senate floor. And beyond the Senate floor, the gang of eight working <coughs> behind the scenes and publicly to push that through. Senator Marco Rubio, of course, a key player in that debate. We're watching him very closely and someone not incidentally who is often mentioned as a possible 2016 presidential contender. On the House side, we don't know what will happen with immigration. There's a group working in the House to try to put together its own bill. So far, they have not been able to do that. So we'll continue to watch whether they can do that, whether if a Senate bill gets through, they take that bill up, or what happens next. So a very exciting time in Washington. I, I've, I've given up on the new slowdown. I think it's just not going to happen. But there couldn't be a more exciting time to be covering news in this city. We have the sequester, of course, as we were just discussing, going on as well. It's still not clear how that's going to play out. Uh, there is attention, some attention to climate change. That's an issue that some on the left wish President Obama would focus on more. And of course, we have Obamacare that will start to be uh, rolled out in a much greater force in the next year, and year, next year or so. So a lot of news, certainly can't ask for more news. And I'd be very happy to open it up for questions and, and answer as best as I can.